Welcome back to Spitting Bars. This is our last time in Micah here in this series, so let's dive in. I want to close with Micah's closing words. It's a lament that leads us into hope. Chapter 7 is rich, and I want you to experience and feel the weight of his words. Micah is sitting in the wreckage of an unjust society. He's grieving uh, that these people have not returned uh, to God to allow him to restore them, to allow them uh, to, to actually carry out his justice, to, to, to love his, his, his loving kindness, his mercy, and, and to actually walk humbly with and have an, a wonderful, fulfilling relationship with him that actually changes the world. Micah is so grieved by it because it seems like no one else is interested in that. And I don't know if you've ever felt that kind of isolation that's like, am I the only one around that really loves the living God and I want good things for those around? This is an isolating feeling. When we see the brokenness of the world, sometimes it makes us feel like we're the only one that does. And I just want to, I want to read that in the spirit of that kind of, of context that Micah finds himself in. What misery is mine? I am like one who gathers summer fruit at the gleaning of the vineyard. There is no cluster of grapes to eat. None of the early figs that I crave. The faithful have been swept from the land. Not one upright person remains. Everyone lies in wait to shed blood. They hunt each other with nets. Both hands are skilled in doing evil. The ruler demands gifts. The judge accept bribes. The powerful dictate what they desire. They all conspire together. The best of them is like a briar. The most upright worse than a thorn hedge. The day God visits you has come. The day your watchmen sound the alarm, now is the time of your confusion. Do not trust a neighbor. Put no confidence in a friend. Even the woman who lies in your embrace, guard the words of your lips. For a son dishonors his father. A daughter rises up against her mother. A daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Man's enemies are the members of his own household. But as for me, I watch in hope for the Lord. I wait for God my Savior. My God will hear me. Do not gloat over me, my enemy. Though I have fallen, I will rise. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light. Because I have sinned against him, I will bear the Lord's wrath until he pleads my case and upholds my cause. He will bring me out into the light. I will see his righteousness. Then my enemy will see it and will be covered with shame. She who said to me, where is the Lord your God? My eyes will see her downfall. Even now she will be trampled underfoot like mire in the streets. The day for building your walls will come. The day for extending your boundaries. And that day people will come to you. From Assyria and the cities of Egypt, even from Egypt to the Euphrates, and from sea to sea, and from mountain to mountain. The earth will become desolate because of its inhabitants. As the result of their deeds, shepherd your people with your staff, the flock of your inheritance which lives by itself in a forest and fertile pasture lands. Let them feed in Bashan and Gilead as in days long ago. As in the days when you came out of Egypt, I will show them my wonders. Nations will see and be ashamed, deprived of all their power. They will put their hands over their mouths and their ears will become deaf. They will lick dust like a snake, like creatures that crawl on the ground. They will come trembling out of their dens. They will turn in fear to the Lord our God and will be afraid of you. Who is a God like you, who pardons sin and forgives the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance? You do not stay angry forever, but delight to show mercy. You will again have compassion on us. You will tread our sins underfoot and hurl all our iniquities into the depths of the sea. You will be faithful to Jacob and show love to Abraham as you pledged on oath to our ancestors in days long ago. So the protest poet, do you hear how his anguish and his isolation leads him into remembering the promises of God? Do you you feel the tension between the deep realities of the brokenness around us and the hope that God indeed is true to who he is and to who he has promised to be to us? He promised to Abraham. He promised to Jacob that his people would be with him 
And despite our iniquities, God is going to come and tread them and throw them in the sea. This uh, evocative imagery that, that, that uh, Micah is saying with, with, with near paranoia, that you can't trust anybody, we're all broken. And both of our hands, as John Foreman rephrases this, both of our hands are equally skilled at doing evil. And John Foreman also, chewing on the message of the prophet of Micah, says that both of his hands are equally skilled at ruining evil. And we know what happened to both of Christ's hands. As the nails were were drawn in and he spread his arms open wide and he bore our iniquities. That as the psalmist says, he put our sin as far as the east is from the west. As Casting Crowns, another songwriting group, from one scarred hand to the other. That's how far our sin has been removed. So would you hear the complex art of what it means to observe reality, the brokenness of the world, and feel the isolation of noticing all things broken and grieving that? And the intricate hope of God making things new again. Can we pray like this? Can we protest like this? Can we be in this tension between what is broken and where things are going? That's the prophetic tension. That's the prophetic hope. That's, as Walter Brueggemann calls it, the prophetic imagination. That we actually have our eyes on a horizon where things are whole again. Shalom. Realized. And so this is the tension we live in. And it's okay to feel this. Actually, I think it, what it means to live awake to the realities of the world is that we feel this tension between the brokenness, God's incoming repair, as we hope he works it among our own lives and in, in the world around us. So I'm just going to close this with a reflection, reciting some words that I, I was really inspired by uh, John Foreman, a surprise, from a song called Love is the Rebel Song. If today knows no justice, I'm better off staying maladjusted. As we hear the pain of what it means to be attentive to the brokenness of the world and to have a prophetic voice and to call people into relationship, corrective relationship with God through the mercy of Jesus Christ. I'll rephrase that sentiment. Don't get used to the brokenness. Don't get used to the brokenness. Let's protest it. Let's mend it. Let's find and spread hope in Christ. Can we do that? Can we take the broken realities around us? Can we, every injustice that you've observed in yourself, in your family, in, in your neighborhood, in, in this country, in the world and the broken pieces of human history, can we just hold it and grieve it and in the same breath hold it before God, believing the promises that he has made to restore us in Christ Jesus for the new heavens and the new earth to be realized? Don't get used to the brokenness, but don't be destroyed by it either. Okay. Can we do that? Can we stay aware with a holy restlessness that God indeed is making all things new in Christ? So as we spend our, our time soaking in the, the imagery, the rhetoric, the history, the motifs, the world of the biblical prophets, namely through Micah, May we use this book, this inspired by God, giving us a glimpse of his heart. May it help us to see him and see the world around us through Christ's eyes. So would you pray to become aware of the brokennesses around you and bring the hope of Jesus into them? Mm-hmm.